Merry Christmas! Oh, oh, oh! Welcome to the Angeliet Sancti Christmas Special. Today, we'll be looking at the top 10 St. Nicholas facts that you probably didn't know. For <clears throat> Forget everything you know about the decadent, corporate, modern Santa Claus. A champion of greed and envy with no reverence for the birth of our Lord, who always gives more presents to rich kids than to poor ones. Cast out this imposter from among us and embrace tradition. The holliest, the jolliest, Saint Nicholas Omino! Number 10. St. Nicholas is Greek. <laughs> Far from the North Pole, the real St. Nicholas was actually born to Greek parents in the ancient city of Patara in Anatolia in the year 270 AD. Nicholas's parents were wealthy Christians. But when they both died of the plague, Nicholas gave out their belongings to the poor. Number 9. Outliving Diocletian's Persecution Under the reign of the objectively evil Roman Emperor Diocletian, many Christians were imprisoned, tortured, and killed for their beliefs. Diocletian sought to exterminate the Christian faith once and for all, believing that all preceding persecutions didn't go far enough. Nicholas was soon imprisoned and endured years of torture. Years later, after being forced to retire, Diocletian lived just long enough to see his entire legacy destroyed and then kill himself. Nicholas, later freed by Constantine the Great, went on to live for almost 40 more years. Number 8. Literally Praying the Rain Away Ever recited the phrase, rain, rain, go away, come again some other day? Once on a Mediterranean voyage from the Holy Land, St. Nicholas's ship was struck by a violent storm. And without losing his nerve, Nicholas literally prayed the rain away. Well, he didn't actually say, rain, rain, go away. He prayed for our Lord Jesus Christ to save him and his crew, much more effective method. And the good Lord delivered them safely from the storm. Number 7. Multiplying the Wheat Once during a harsh famine in Anatolia, a ship filled with grain headed for Rome stopped at Myra. St. Nicholas convinced the sailors on board to give some wheat to the locals. This was despite the fact that the emperor in Rome ordered the exact quantity of grain that was on board and would weigh it upon arrival to make sure that none was missing. Nicholas secured enough grain for the locals to last two full years, and later, when the same ship reached Rome, the sailors were surprised to discover that none of the grain was missing. Number 6. Bane of Cannibals 
Also during the time of a terrible famine, a malicious butcher killed three small children and planned to cook them and sell them as ham. Nicholas saw through the lies of the devilish killer, and, by the power of God, he resurrected the three children by making the sign of the cross over their bodies. Number 5. Patron Saint by Mistake Remember how I mentioned Saint Nick is the patron saint of both brewers and children? There's actually a funny story behind that. Long after St. Nicholas died, paintings of him were going around during the Middle Ages about the miracle of him resurrecting three children. Many people at the time saw the paintings but didn't know the actual story, since most people couldn't read back then. So the paintings gave rise to two popular theories. That looks like a beer barrel. He must be the patron saint of beer lads. Let's grab a pint. No. Look at the children, it's the patron saint of children in it. Thus, Saint Nick from then on was also patron saint of brewers and of children. Number 4. Destroyer of Heretics Alright, this one you maybe do know, but it's too awesome to leave out. In 325 AD, Saint Nicholas attended the Council of Nicaea, the famous early church council that would give us the Nicene Creed. At the council, the infamous heretic Arius, founder of Arianism, was in attendance. On one famous incident, Arius was spouting some heretical hogwash in the council. There was a time when the sun was not. And Saint Nicholas immediately punched him in the face. Nicholas was actually put in prison for this. But later, while in his jail cell, Jesus Christ and the Virgin Mary appeared to him and freed him. This would be another embarrassing incident for the heretic Arius, who would go on to die in one of the most embarrassing ways possible. Number 3. Nicholas's remains survive to this day. The bones of St. Nicholas aren't just preserved, they are very well preserved. Especially for a man born in the 200s AD. For centuries after the death of St. Nick, his bones have been stored in a crypt in the Basilica of St. Nicholas in Bari, Italy. During the 1950s, in the midst of a church renovation, church officials allowed scientists to examine the bones of St. Nicholas. Researchers from the University of Bari took thousands of measurements and x-rays, and ultimately determined that the skeleton is legit. The bones of St. Nicholas matched up with the time period he lived in, and even exhibited clear signs of torture, such as a partially healed broken nose, which we know St. Nicholas went through in a Roman prison. Number 2 what he actually looked like? Thanks to these in-depth studies of the remains of St. Nicholas, scientists in the United Kingdom in 2014 managed to reconstruct the face of Nicholas using AI. This is what is said to be the true face of Santa. Number 1. When we should actually celebrate St. Nicholas. St. Nicholas was a remarkable saint and an inspiration for Christians around the world. But I'll take this opportunity now to stand on my soapbox and offer my opinion on his veneration in the Christmas season. St. Nicholas's feast day varies by country, but in almost all places, his day comes before Christmas. He's a saint that should be celebrated during Advent, in the time leading up to Christmas, and not on Christmas. Modern Christmas is overflowed with mentions of Santa Claus and St. Nick. In secular culture, he's the singular hero of the day, a day that amounts to a celebration of gift-giving and nothing more. This is not the Christmas we as Christians ought to celebrate. Rather, Christmas is a day to give thanks for the greatest gift our Lord has ever given the world, the Word made flesh, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God sent the Son into the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Make this holiday all about Jesus. Jesus is our love, our light, our salvation. Spread the good news, for today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glorify the Lord with your life. Peace be with you. Have a Merry Christmas and a Blessed New Year.
For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.